Oh yeah, I'm sure you'll- wait, did he just call me a squib? Good afternoon, warriors. How are you all doing today? It's Zach, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my story of how I fell in love with Harry Potter. In case it hasn't been super clear through all of the reviews, Pottermore tests, and goofy apparitions that I just can't quite get right, I am a massive Harry Potter fan. Obviously, I've shown a little bit of it here on the channel, but I haven't taken an entire video to unpack it all and truly express how much of a fanatic I am. Granted, my collection isn't as large as some. I'm looking at you, Miss Brizzy Ravenclaw. But I have collected quite a number of things throughout the years that tell my entire story of how I've been immersed in the Harry Potter universe, and I wanted to share that with you. For me, this whole adventure started back in the year 1998 or 1999 in either grade 3 or grade 4 with the first four Harry Potter books that I actually got from my sister. Being introduced to a story of an outcast kid with a wild imagination really connected with me and it probably helped a bit that I was already into Pokemon so fantasy wasn't a far stretch from that. Once I started reading the Philosopher's Stone, I had a really hard time putting them down. I would constantly be reading through recess breaks, through lunch periods. You could say I had a tiny little obsession. <laughs> Try grop sized Ah! Who are you? Easy there, Dottie. I'm the wizard version of you. You know, the one that comes out in these videos every so often. Have you never noticed that our magic works a little bit better when you're wearing the necklace and these glasses? Maybe a little bit. Well, there you go. If you've been a part of me every time I go to make a Harry Potter video, why are you suddenly deciding to come out now? I don't want you flubbing up key details of my existence. Face it, your head can be full of Raxburg sometimes. Eh, fair enough. After I finished the first couple of books, I started to get even more involved in JK's Wizarding World. So much that in grade 5, I actually dressed up as Harry Potter for a special class screening of Chamber of Secrets. Yeah, you actually dressed up and Emily went all Hermione on you. What an idiot. Thank you. You even wore that cheap vampire cake to use as a cloak. Thank you! Naturally, as the years went on and on, I got so into Harry Potter that when Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, Deathly Hallows, and eventually last year, Cursed Child came out, I pre-ordered them as soon as they were available. Hang on, I'm getting something in my tea leaves here. Weren't there some midnight release outings or something? Yeah, but they weren't big events. Coles can pull off stuff like that. Yeah, but they did happen. Whatever. Know it all. Excuse me? Nothing! Way before all this, I had a Harry Potter journal that I wrote in consistently, first just recording my race records for PlayStation's Test Drive Off-Road, then I actually started to journal in them and keep track of my days. I still have to make a reaction video to some of those. And eventually I picked up some light reading with Quidditch Through the Ages, Tales of Beetle the Bard, and the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them textbook that they actually use in the Harry Potter movies. Not that we've ever seen them use it, but it's by Newt Scamander, so you know it's the one they use. Then of course there are the movies, and naturally, I have every single one of them. The first two, Chamber of Secrets and Philosopher's Stone, I actually have on full screen, because that was back in the day when you had the box TVs, and full screen was the option to go with. Remarkably, I only went to the midnight release for one of them, the first part of Deathly Hallows, and those two movies were the only ones I got on Blu-ray. They've been re-released so that they're all on Blu-ray now, but I just don't have the galleons to get all that. And now that we're getting five movies based on what happened before Harry Potter's time, naturally I had to add Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them to the collection, because otherwise it just wouldn't be complete. How'd I do with all that? Did I miss anything? Nope, that pretty much covers it. Great, moving on. There's also a number of accessories, knickknacks, and paraphernalia that I've been able to pick up, some of which I've long lost and have no idea where it is. Others I still hold on to, like my Deathly Hallows necklace, a Gryffindor bookmark, since I am Gryffindor no matter what Pottermore tells me, 
I had to redo the test and it gave me Hufflepuff, which I don't agree with, but I will roll with it. My Fantastic Beast posters that I have, and there's also a calendar up on one of my other walls. There was also a specialized cloak I made for my Harry Potter cosplay that I used back in 2014 when I went to HalCon with my friends Nicole and Ellen, who dressed up as Luna Lovegood and Dolores Umbridge. I got some really cool photos with them for that. I got to get revenge on Bellatrix for what she did to Sirius, and I almost got a Dementor's kiss from Ricky Licati, or Riddle. And of course, my wand. Even though it doesn't always work. Well, what do you expect me to do? I don't have the proper wand, and it's not like I'm just going to be able to go out and get it. Well, I mean, if all of Anders was still working. Do not! And some stuff that I did have that unfortunately got lost in the room of requirement a long time ago was a stationery kit complete with envelopes that actually had the Hogwarts crest on them, various stickers for all of the different houses, plus Hedwig, and the paper actually looked like parchment. I would write little notes and stick them in envelopes, then I'd probably just like put them in our mailbox, or I'd give them to my friends at school. I, I don't remember what happened with it. It was at least a decade ago. I had this creative how-to book for various different types of potions and magical things like gnome gardens, do-it-yourself fairy lights, and I think even directed you on how to make your own wand. By far, one of the best things that I had around grade 5, grade 6, was a ton of cards for the Harry Potter trading card game. I had a mat that you would lay out and you could cast spells and summon fantastic beasts with lesson cards, similar to how you would play Magic the Gathering. I would build my own decks and then let my friends borrow them so I could actually play against someone as opposed to just by myself. Personally, I remember it being a lot of fun to even just collect the cards, let alone play with other people. And every time we had allowance, we would get a couple of packs from the dollar store. Those were good days. Yeah. That's pretty much it. All of my Harry Potter collection laid out for you guys, my story told to the universe. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little memory trip down Diagon Alley with me. I know I want to be the person I am today if I hadn't have been introduced to Harry Potter at such a young age, going through years of reading, watching, being immersed in the community that J.K. Rowling has created. Meaning, I wouldn't exist, and what a Cho Chang crying shame that would be. Okay, now I see where people get the pompous Gryffindor idea from. Thanks for helping out, wizard me. Hey, what are good wizards for, right? Catch you next time, squib. Oh yeah, I'm sure you'll- wait, did he just call me a squib? If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to punch the like button, and if you are a huge Harry Potter fan like myself, let me know down in the comments what your favorite Harry Potter memory is. Was it a midnight showing? Was it a book release? Or was it one of the many trips to Harry Potter Land in California or Orlando? Which I still have to get to. It is on my bucket list. I need to make it happen. I look forward to hearing about all the awesome opportunities you guys have had in the Harry Potter world. And if you like this style of video, please let me know. I really want to branch out creatively in my content and be able to express what I'm passionate about in a way that's both exciting for me and stretches me as a person. That's one of the things I really hope to be able to do with these videos, encourage you guys to keep stretching your boundaries, and hopefully I'm doing that. I'll see you guys in my next video. Live to be different and be who you were made to be.